Coming up on today's show, President Biden puts America back on track to lowering its emissions, rejoining the Paris Climate Accord, and prepares to boost renewables. BP-backed Israeli firm StoreDot delivers the first commercial engineering samples of its revolutionary ultra-fast rechargeable battery, and Rivian brings in a massive $2.65 billion in its latest investment round. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to TEN, Transport Evolved News. It has been a crazy busy week, so let's get right on with it. This show is sponsored by the Electric Auto Association. Join them and help the switch from fossil fuels to electric today by heading to electricauto.org. We start today's show with the inauguration of US President Joseph R. Biden and Vice President Kamala D. Harris, which took place on Wednesday this week. Within hours of the inauguration ceremony, President Biden signed two new executive orders designed to put the US back on track towards a cleaner, greener future, rejoining the Paris Climate Accord and cancelling permits for the controversial Keystone XL pipeline with immediate effect. President Biden's EPA is already working to overthrow Trump EPA policies that had either removed or reduced Obama-era emissions targets and environmental protections. President Biden's administration has also announced plans to re-establish a social cost of emissions schedule and is expected to work through its election promises towards clean energy and electric vehicles in the coming weeks and months. Mercedes-Benz revealed the latest of its EQ family of electric vehicles this week, the EQA Compact Crossover. Essentially an all-electric version of the Mercedes-Benz GLA, the EQA is smaller than the EQC SUV, but doesn't manage to achieve all that much better range. Mercedes-Benz quotes an NEDC cycle range of 486 kilometers, 301 miles, from a usable 66.5 kilowatt hours of battery capacity. Given how over-optimistic the NEDC cycle is, we'd expect far less in the real world, a fact backed up by the WLTP range rating of 426 kilometers, or 265 miles. The sprint time is just under nine seconds, and prices have been set at around 47,500 euro in Germany. However, don't expect this to go on sale in North America. A week after it pulled the covers off its Altium-based commercial delivery system Brightdrop, General Motors has confirmed a one billion Canadian dollar investment into its CAMI production facilities in Ingersoll, Ontario, specifically to ready it to produce the Brightdrop EV600 commercial vehicle. The investment is the latest in a slew of electric vehicle and renewable energy projects being planned or carried out by GM, including at its Oshawa assembly facility. The retooling will take place in the coming months, with GM aiming to produce its first EV600s for customers, including FedEx, by the end of this year. The EV600's sibling product, the EP1 electric pallet truck, will begin sales in the next few months. The electric vehicle world is full of companies and research institutions promising major breakthroughs in its battery technologies, from solid-state batteries through to cobalt-free cells, and even some more exotic cell chemistries, there's a lot of money being invested in the battery industry right now. Most of these breakthrough cells never actually make it into production, but Israeli firm StoreDot has just announced that it's delivered its first engineering samples to customers in both the tech and auto industries. StoreDot, backed by BP, has long been promising a cell with a five-minute recharge time. Last year, it demonstrated a real-world application of that technology in an electric scooter fitted with prototype cells. While engineering samples show it's closer than ever before to production, it will still It'll be a number of years before we know for sure if StoreDot has a viable commercial future. Porsche officially began sales of its new entry-level Taycan electric car this week. Coming in below the previously launched Taycan 4S, the new model, simply called the Porsche Taycan, is a rear-wheel drive variant which offers up to 300 kilowatts at the wheels in standard mode and up to 350 kilowatts in the temporary boost mode. As a side, the video you're seeing right now is of its more powerful siblings because no B-roll exists of the Porsche Taycan. 
The Porsche Taycan will be available with a choice of 79.2 kilowatt hour pack for up to 431 kilometers, 268 miles of range, or 93.4 kilowatt hour battery pack for 481 kilometers, or 299 miles of range, both on the WLTP test cycle. It will cost from 81,250 US dollars, including destination charges, but excluding any tax incentives or credits in the US. As we all know, Tesla is blisteringly quick in its innovation cycle, and just a few months after it held its important battery day, it's already well into the hiring process for staff to work on the new 4680 battery production line. This week, Tesla released a short video on its YouTube channel showcasing that battery production line in operation. It highlights the sheer size, speed, and efficiency of the mainly automated line. With Tesla now confirmed to be producing structural battery packs for Model Y, a few sneak photos have been flying around online this week that we haven't been able to get rights clearance to show, I suspect it's only a matter of months before we see Model 3 and Model Y prices drop around the world as these new cells are implemented. Oh, and in case you were interested, the music playing on Tesla's video is the 1960 B-side to Don Hinton's Joanne single. It's called Honey Bee. General Motors, its self-driving subsidiary Cruise, and Microsoft have announced a new partnership this week to accelerate the commercialization of self-driving vehicles. In addition to its fleet of prototype self-driving Chevrolet Volt EVs, Cruise is readying its first production vehicle for market in the form of the Cruise Origin, a box-shaped, fully autonomous passenger pod vehicle powered by GM's Ultium battery pack and drivetrain. As part of the new partnership, Cruise will make use of Microsoft's Azure Cloud and Edge server platforms. At the same time as announcing the new partnership, Cruise also confirmed that Microsoft has joined General Motors, Honda, and other big name investors in a brand new equity investment round worth a total of 2 billion US dollars. This pushes Cruise's total valuation to 30 billion. The Cruise Origin is expected to enter into production this year. A week after the US National Highway Traffic Safety Administration called on Tesla to begin a recall campaign to address the failing eMMC memory chips inside early Tesla Model S and Tesla Model X MCU touchscreen systems, Tesla has caused a little bit of a stir among some Tesla fans online. Instead of simply offering a recall program and replacing faulty units with refurbished or remanufactured as new ones, Tesla is actually offering customers of older vehicles the chance to upgrade their car's MCU to a newer unit with a lot more functionality, for a total of $1,500 US dollars. That's better than the $2,500 it used to charge. It's not clear how many owners are paying for the upgrade, or indeed if Tesla is urging customers to upgrade rather than switch out. But according to some of my contacts, it appears some owners have managed to get a free MCU replacement rather than choose to upgrade. Sadly, though, it's hard to get to the bottom of this story, especially without a Tesla media department to talk to for regarding clarification. Rivian may be heading towards series production of its R1T and R1S, and already has production validation vehicles rolling off its normal Illinois production line, but this week it announced another successful funding round. Coming in hot off the heels of a July 2020 funding round, which netted it a total of two and a half billion US dollars, this new round, worth 2.65 billion, includes sizable investment from T. Rowe Price Associates, a well-known backer of Tesla during its early days. T. Rowe Price is joined by Fidelity Management and Research Company, Amazon's Climate Pledge Fund, and D1 Capital Partners, among others. The latest round means that Rivian has raised more than $8 billion in capital in just two years and should be funding itself well beyond the start of series production of its vehicles. And now it's time for Short Shorts. Volkswagen CEO Herbert Diess now has a Twitter account, and it seems he's taking a leaf out of Elon Musk's book, teasing future developments from the company. This week, he previewed Project Trinity, the next electric vehicle platform being developed by Volkswagen. Elon Musk has announced on Twitter this week that he will be personally funding a 100 million US dollar cash prize fund to find the best carbon capture technology out there. Details aren't available yet, but Musk's promising that he'll share those next week. 
the Porsche Taycan 4S has officially been given a 10% increase in range from the EPA, but not due to any new battery cells or power management. The car tested by the EPA this time was fitted with the more common wheels rather than the optional massive 21-inch rims that the car was previously tested with. The DeLorean Motor Company posted a press release this week that suggests it's getting close to being able to produce replica DMC-12s, some of which may be electric. Apparently, the company's been waiting on NHTSA regulations to catch up with recent US federal law. The merger between Fiat Chrysler and Peugeot Citroën has officially gone ahead, resulting in a new mega automotive company called Stellantis. Focused on cleaner vehicles, the mega company promises good things for EVs in the future. Nissan has teased a brand new concept vehicle in the form of the Nissan ENV200 Winter Camper. Yes, it's essentially an ENV200 Avalia camper conversion, has got extra chunky tires and is showcased enjoying some winter fun. But I don't think it will ever make it to production. Renowned white hat hacker Green the Only has found some new documentary evidence to suggest that Tesla is about to start officially selling tow hitches for the Tesla Model 3 in North America, as well as introducing the optional adjustable air suspension package for the Model 3 and Model Y. BMW has released a new teaser video of its production Intent i4 sedan undergoing what it says is final calibration tests ahead of the vehicle's official production launch this year. The video shows the i4 tackling a course accompanied by approval noises from its test driver. Former Nissan executive, father of the Nissan Leaf and recently departed CEO of Aston Martin, Andy Palmer, has written to the UK government warning that it has a need for major investment in the UK battery manufacturing industry or it will lose its auto industry to Europe for good. Sales data from Q4 in California shows that Tesla registrations soared at the end of last year, buoyed primarily by the increased sales of the Tesla Model Y. Overall, 63% more Teslas were registered in Q4 2020 when compared to Q4 2019. New motorcycle startup Alarendo Motorcycle has revealed a teaser of its upcoming TS Bravo electric motorcycle. Expected to undercut the competition in the marketplace, it boasts believable commuter bike specs, including a 58 kilowatt motor and sizable liquid cooled battery pack. Talking of two wheels, electric bicycle sales in Europe are predicted to triple in just five years' time, meaning that electric bicycle sales will completely eclipse sales of electric motorcycles and electric cars. As an entry-level way into the EV marketplace, I can't agree more. Sticker prices for the Tesla Model 3 have been dramatically cut in Europe this week, with the entry-level Standard Range Plus getting an almost €4,000 slashed off its price. It places Model 3 at a very competitive price point in the very now crowded EU EV marketplace. A new IEA report published this week shows that overall carbon emissions fell across all transportation sectors last year, primarily due to COVID and increased EV sales, all except one that is. That one sector, that was SUV sales, meaning that all of the gains from EV drivers was cancelled out by increased emissions of gas guzzlers. I really hope we tackle this head on. Tesla has posted a job listing this week for an energy customer support specialist, or in plain language, reading the job description, someone who can deal with a large number of customer complaints and questions sent to Elon Musk via Twitter every day. The latest JD Power survey into EV ownership shows what we all knew. When you go electric, you rarely go back to internal combustion engines. It also says that EV owners are fickle about which brands they choose, but say that Tesla's Model S and the Kia Nero EV ranked highest among driver satisfaction. Italian coach building specialists Aries Design have revealed a stunning bespoke Tesla Model S conversion. The attention to detail in this car is absolutely stunning, and frankly, I think this is the best coach built Model S convertible I have ever seen. Bravissimo! Canadian electric vehicle specialists Lion have announced another massive order for 60 electric school buses. It shows that there is now a real acceleration in pushes across North America to transition smelly diesel school buses to electric drivetrains, and that is a very good thing.
Opel and its sister company Vauxhall has announced an all-electric version of its Combo cargo van. Smaller than the Vivaro E, the Combo E cargo is ideally suited to small businesses who don't need a vehicle for deliveries that is larger than they have. The Canadian province of British Columbia has increased its rebate program for commercial electric vehicles and has increased the total funds available for businesses making the transition to electric, up to a total of 100,000 Canadian dollars per truck. This should really help kickstart an electric big rig revolution in Canada. A week after it revealed its latest prototype, Sono Motors has published an official ad for its upcoming Sion EV. Yes, apparently it is pronounced Sion and not Scion, so sorry I've been getting that wrong for the past couple of years. It is a cute and informative video, so make sure you check it out. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. Ford has confirmed this week that it's pushed back North American customer deliveries of its Mustang Mach-E electric SUV in order to carry out, quote, additional quality checks on several hundred Mustang Mach-E models built before dealer shipments started last month. Several hundred customers in North America have consequently had their deliveries pushed back while those checks are carried out. But just as soon as we heard of the problems, it appears that Ford may have already solved them and is back on track with several owners on the Mark E forums now noticing that having had their car's deliveries pushed back by Ford, they're now having them brought back forwards again. If you've got a Mark E or you're waiting to get one, I'd love to know your experiences in the comments below. And finally, over the last few years, autonomous air taxi services have been promised by an increasingly large number of startups, many of them with sizable investment behind them. But to date, none have actually made that final step towards commercial reality. But this week, German-based Volocopter announced that it has taken one more step towards that and has begun the official certification processes required in both the European Union Union and the United States in order to be allowed to operate as a commercial air carrier. The process is a lengthy one, so we shouldn't expect to see volocopters buzzing around major cities this year or next, but as the world turns a page and starts to take our transportation emissions as seriously, I think it's certainly conceivable that air taxis will be a common sight in city skies within the next decade or so. And on that exciting note, we are in fact done for the day. Before I go, I would like to thank the Electric Auto Association for their sponsorship of today's show. They have been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967, and they firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean, green electric cars today. You can find out how to join, how to become a local EV educator, find local monthly groups to attend, virtually at the moment of course, or find EV owners near to you that you can ask questions about if you're considering making your own switch from petrol to electric by going to electricauto.org. I would love it if you comment and subscribe to this channel, as well as consider supporting us using one of the links below. There's also a link below to our Discord chat room, which is free to join, so give it a go if you'd like. And please do check out our Redbubble TE merch store, as well as our brand new website. And in case you didn't hear, we are currently looking for a new team member to join us and help handle our social media interactions just like Elon Musk. So if you're interested, be sure to check out the link in the show notes below. I'll be back next week, but until then, enjoy the rest of your weekend, stay safe, and keep evolving.